bill, bill, I got a ticket. I'm proud I'm getting with it. Tell Bill I got a ticket home. Too many nights get you bumping in the grind, and Lord, won't you lead me down Salutation Road? I got the first train home. Hello, Mick. Welcome to our very first Desert Island Darkroom. You're our very first castaway. It's good to have you on board and thank you for taking the time to be part of this journey. Mick Critchlow is a social documentary photographer based in the northeast of England. Mick's work lies in the tradition of a photographer documenting the social life and social change within his own community. Mick has been documenting the people of Ashington, Northumberland for over 40 years. Previous to that, Mick was a merchant seaman and spent several years out at sea working um, all over the world. In between his photography, he's taken time out to do other things like open music shops, guitar shops, and coming back into the industry refreshed after a number of years out. Some of his work has the titles of Pitheads, Whippets and Sea Callers, and he has been associated with the Side Gallery in Newcastle since 1980. Amongst his travels, he's covered projects in Nicaragua and work in the Merseyside Dockyards. Did you have some association with the Merseyside Dockyard boys with your travels at sea? Uh, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole point of the Seaman project was the fact that uh, a lot of my friends couldn't get work at sea. Uh, and I, I decided to do a, a project on the, uh, the lifestyle and working environment of seamen uh, amongst the, the companies who were still employing British seamen. You know, there was, was a big thing in the 1980s where uh, shipping companies would flag out to uh, flags of convenience and uh, replace a 30-man crew with 60, 60 uh, Southeast Asians on half pay. Uh, so, so the work, the work opportunities for people were, were were drying up, and it was just my attempt of uh, of uh, documenting the uh, the lifestyle as as, as it was. Uh, and I travelled you know, back back to sea again on ships as a, as a supernumerary uh, guest. Um, so I was photographing colliers and oil tankers and stuff like that. And then um, the seaman strike happened halfway through the project and I spent the, last, spent the next 16 months uh, working on the picket lines down in Dover and uh, up in Birkenhead. I bet it was like coming home with the dockers. You brought a lot of experience and an understanding, I guess, with that project, did you? Uh, I, I think I was more accepted of the fact that I, 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 did, I did actually hold a British seaman's card. Um, yeah. You know, and that was my passport in. And I was also working closely with uh, uh, Jim Slater, who was the, um, the president of the um, National Union of Seamen at the yeah. time. He was based in South Shields, so he, he helped me to get uh, access uh, access to the ships, access to the unions. Um, so, you know, really, I was the only photographer working from the seamen's side um, of, the, of, of that 16-month uh, dispute. Yeah, I guess that, that, I suppose that give you, uh, um, with the men, it give you an acceptance, I guess, doesn't it? You were one of them in a way, I guess. And, you know, we could, we could talk about different ports and different, yeah. uh, different companies that we had sailed in. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, 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 a, um, it's a shared history, you know, so, you know, you know you can actually you know, yeah. work on experience to, to gain the trust of other you know, people within that group. With your projects, Pitheads, Whippets and Sea Callers, you associated with the side gallery, which the side gallery you've been really productive over the eighties and nineties with the with your association there. How did that come about, and how did some of the projects evolve? Well, you know, my association with side gallery really came about in, uh, in around nineteen seventy nine. Um, I was involved with uh, well, I had applied for uh, Northern Arts funding, which is the art you know, it was the Northern version of Arts Arts Council uh, to continue my work in the Ashton area, which I've been doing since nineteen seventy seven. Um, so I, I gained a grant from uh, Northern Arts, and as part of that, there was a, a group exhibition on in Newcastle at the Spectro Arts Workshops. Um, and my, my work was noticed there by people from the side, uh, in, in particular Derek Smith, who was uh, one of the directors there at the time. And uh, they invited me in, and um, they, they, they took me under the wing, really, as a, as a young, I was just a young 22, 23 year old photographer. Uh, just fresh out of college. Um, I, I studied graphic design. I didn't study photography uh, at all. Yeah. Uh, that, that was only just part of my uh, my, my, my course. Um, so they took me in down there, and uh, you know it was, it was good company down there as well. You know, it was Chris Chris Kilt working down there at the time, uh, James Smith, Sir Cottingham, 
uh, Derry Smith, of course. Um, so it was a really good setup down there. There was some outstanding work being shown at, at, at the site at that time. I do remember about 1990, your Nicaragua project was at the side. And I remember that as a continuation of a lot of other Central American projects at the time. What was the Nicaraguan project about? Well, I, I, I just got it in my head one day to, to go to Nicaragua and shoot the elections, you know, <laughs> and decided to you know, head down to London, try and get some retainers and stuff like that from uh, editors. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, Colin Jacobson at uh, The Independent um, put me on a retainer and I, I just shot off to uh, Nicaragua for four weeks and uh, photographed in around, uh, in around Managua and um, yeah, went sort of on Duran Hills with, with the Sandinistas and uh, all sorts of stuff, uh, which was new to me, you know. Um, it's uh, a lot different from uh, working in Lashin, you know. How did... Um... How did you, how did you see London in a sense when you were you say you went down to see the, the College Jacobson I presume the Independent on Saturday magazine I presume that was wasn't it? Yeah. Did yeah. you how did you associate yourself being up in Ashton and working so productively at the side because you know London was the place wasn't it London was where you made yourself as a as a photographer in the UK and and how do you feel you fitted into that and how do you feel you fit into that now? I felt, uh, I felt that I didn't really fit into the London scene. Um, I had friends still down there, and I was staying, staying with a friend of mine down in Clapham, um, a lad, lad called Jim Cooper, uh, studied under Martin Park, uh, West Surrey. Uh, I, think, I think he studied with Ken Grant, actually, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the early 90s. Um, so I was, you know, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was down there with, you know, staying with my friends, uh, and I was, I was getting to see uh, you know, um, people like Shirley, Shirley Berry and Shirley Berry at uh, Select, uh, agency who was, uh, I, th I think it's the Lord uh, Michael Thienbury. Um, I was trying to get on, onto an agency, and so I was, I was able to see Steve Mears at Network, um, Hilary Glennon at uh, Impact. And all they were really interested in was photographs of Newcastle, uh, Newcastle's big markets or um, Ram Raiders. Yeah. I, thought, well, I, I, I don't really fit in this, you know. Um, and, uh, and I did have a strong portfolio of work at the time, and I didn't think, really think that my work was uh, taken serious enough because, you know, at, at the end of the day, I was from, uh, you know, deepest Northumberland. Uh, they were down in London. Uh, they just picked the phone up and they've got a photographer there in two minutes. Yeah. Um, so I, I was away from that production hub, if you like. What's kept your mental sense of being and, and photography focus in action? And what is it about why you continue to document that area? What, 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 what's been taken away thinking, oh, this is, I've got to do this? Um, you know, when, I, when I first came back home from the Merchant Navy, I, I noticed that um, things were, were changing rapidly in the town. Um, you know, my, my experience of action at that time was maybe you know, coming home for, for um, a week's leave from the Merchant Navy and then flying off somewhere else to go somewhere else. Uh, so it, 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 when I came back home to do, um, do my studies, um, I, just, you know, I decided to do an arts arts foundation course, um, but uh, I realised you know that things were actually you know, things were changing rapidly, and uh, you know, buildings, people, the people that I knew, you know, they were all disappearing. So I decided to document the area um, as it was. You know, I, I remember putting my, my application into Northern Arts, and my, my, my first open statement was like that I saw my work in the context of a long, long term plan. Uh, working in the area during periods of um, social and economic change. Um, I didn't, little did I realise in 1978 when I made that statement that I was, you know, 40, 40 plus years later, I would be still doing the same project. Uh, it's been a long, it's, it's been a long haul. Well, Nick, now for the next haul, you're a castaway on your island and you're I'll bringing be, with you eight of your photographs, which we're going to have a look at. You're going to bring in, we're going to give you a camera and we're going to give you a brick of foam and a book which is special to your heart. So let's move to the first picture. Can you start us off on our very first castaway photograph? Well, this is one of the first photographs I took while, while I was at college. Um, and th th this was the shot that made me realise that you could fracture, no, no sorry, sorry, that you would, uh, that you would capture. Um, just a moment in time with photography. You know, it, it wasn't just for record, it was for, for uh, caption sort of just, just
just fleeting moments. And I, I think um, that through, you know, throughout the years, my work's developed in that way that I actually look for uh, these moments of happenstance. Yeah. Uh, and this particular shot was taken on Christmas Eve in 1977. Uh, and this small girl in the middle of the picture, she had broken away from her parents who were on the right there. And what she was doing, she was actually skipping up in the air. And I just had my camera set, um, look, luckily, um, you know, I always used to carry my camera. And I, it's just one of those knee-jerk reactions. I saw her fly up in the air and I, I took the shot. And that, that's what opened my eyes up to um, the, the whole decisive moment type, um, type of scenario within, within photography. It is the decisive moment, isn't it? And is this, what you'd say this is the first shot really? your first shot as, a, as, as the beginning of your road as a documentary photographer. So I could do photography. Did a lot of inspiration come from that shot in ways you would now look at the way you would try and achieve some of your pictures? Uh, a lot of inspiration for me is that, uh, has actually been looking at, uh, at the work of other photographers uh, prior to that as well. You know. Um, but I think with this I'm getting at is, was this the beginning of your journey? Because you've taken all of that your life no. experiences in, in and yeah. now it's like this is it you have to start and this is the starting point I guess with you is yes. that, in, that, in your it, own right in your own right yes that is the that is the start of the journey yeah. and I've made, I've made hundreds of journeys from that particular bus station out into the wider world have you photographed this station a few times since then I've uh, documented it for the past 40 years we're, we're, we're currently in the past two years we've had four different versions of the bus station uh, due to redevelopment and stuff, and uh, um, they've, they've actually put it back to where it was originally, which is which is this the, the, this particular this particular place, and that, uh, where, where the bus station is there now, that's been replaced replaced by by, by Witherspoons, you know. I think um, that's a Cafe Royal book potentially, isn't it? Ca uh, I think Craig Atkinson's had a fascination with his Preston bus station. Maybe uh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Right. There might be some fascination there with Cathay Royal if you've got a good selection of changing changing images of, of Ashton yeah. Bus Station. I bet it's very different now, is it? And I, I presume the, the buses, judging by that tone, are red. Were they red? Uh, they were, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Should be it now. Fantastic. And do you know who the little girl was? I don't. I don't. Um, she, 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 she's she, never seen it. She was jumping for joy. It was Christmas Eve. Yeah. Uh, and she's closer to the old, old dolly, you know, and... Uh, um, exciting times for kids. Okay, wonderful. That's your first picture on your desert island. The second shot. Tell us about the second shot, Mick. Uh, this was uh, this was taken um, in, in one of the local hairdressers uh, when, I, when, I, when I finished college. Um, I, I know I, I, I did freelance work for about twelve months, and then I got some teaching work at uh, Ashington College. And um, one of my um, one of my one of my students was a hairdresser. Uh, he, was, he was doing city and guilds and photography. And um, I said, well, you know, can I come into uh, get your salon and take some photographs on a Saturday morning? He said, yeah, fine. But, uh, you know, this, this particular lady, um, she was actually listening to, the go listening to two other ladies around the corner um, having a little bit of a gossip. Uh, and she must have been shocked at something that someone had said, you know. And uh, now this reminds me of my mother in many ways. Because, I was uh, thinking it may be your mum at first when I first looked at it. I had a feeling somewhere. Well, she was very much like my mother. And if, if my mother had been sitting in that, uh, in that hairdresser's at that time, that would have been her. Listening to all the gossip, taking it all in. Uh, it's, it's just the expression. Just the expression. It's the power of photography, isn't it? It's a sort of, it's a pause which you could read into a hundred times and think, what is she <laughs> thinking? You know, yes. is she, I, I, one thing I do notice about her big hands, she's got really big hands. And, and, for me, yeah. I just see the hands, because uh, yeah. I am fascinated with hands. But yes, beautiful hands, actually. There's a question, uh, it, it's an interesting choice, and it's obviously the beginning of another decisive moment, I guess, for, for her mm. and what she's thinking. And, yes. And I think there's a subtlety to it, but there's also that, 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 that it's, there's a beauty and tranquility in the shop, but there's also an urgency, and I think it's a nice, I think that might be the appeal and the combination yeah. why I like it, and, yeah. and it's lovely tones as well. Yeah, yeah also, also when, when I was doing the art, uh, you know, doing the arts course, I was, I was very interested in surrealism and stuff, and that's, it's quite sure. surreal in way as well. Wonderful. Our third shot, which um, is a fantastic square format. Uh, yes, uh, Rolyflex, yeah. Uh, you know, this was taken, um, 
at, um, at Wall- the Wall Art Cinema in uh, in Ashton. Yeah, Ashton used to have uh, five cinemas, and this was the last night at the last cinema. And um, these three ladies are uh, the, the staff members um, at, at, at the cinema, and uh, they're drinking drinking vodka out of cups and uh, having a cigarette. And uh, they had this poster, and they just started posing with the poster, and uh, managed to manage to photograph uh, photograph this. Um, and it was it was quite strange because uh, you know, one of the women's names was Norma. I'm, I'm nearly certain another one was called Jean. Uh, I, 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 I so one one of the ladies, excuse me, sorry, one of the ladies was called Jean. Yes. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, the, no, the posters. Uh, yeah, they actually gave me that poster. I lost it. I lost it for years down the line. Yeah. Uh, but there was, uh, there was there was a gigantic um, roll of uh, of cinema posters that had been thrown out the day before, from uh, from about forty years worth of uh, cinema releases. Uh, so you can imagine two copies of every James Bond film that was ever there, or every you know, like Gone with the Wind and all sorts of stuff. There were all these you know, mint condition posters, and uh, they were actually thrown out for the bin man. If I had been there the day before, I would have had a a cracking set of uh, cinema posters. You could have probably bought a house with them. Well, it would have been well, a fortune. Yes, I could have bought an island somewhere. So this shot, I guess, is a current theme with some of your work with the end of either shot, end of the day shot, where yes. the last stand shot, you know, like the, the final yes. shot before it closes. Um, and this, in a particular way, is quite a serious shot. And at the same time, you've it's obviously... Quite had a dream or two, which is which is good, and I think that's your privilege as a photographer to sort of decide how we, how you should end. You know, you, you could have a sort of sentimental shot of somebody looking at the camera, but yeah. it, this is really says a lot, you know, about the workers that you know, with the legs and the cup of tea and 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 the, and the fun putting the normal jean poster. So I think it's a really clever shot. Yeah. But your this is a vein which is within a lot of your work, isn't it? With your your, your, your coal miners, for one. Well, yeah, that's that's right. Um, you know, I, I used to have a bit of a reputation around Ashton that, um, that uh, if, if Mick turned up uh, at a work site, we must be closing, you know. Um, um, I, had, I had a reputation of going in at the last moment uh, for, to photograph uh, closing factories and you know, closing shops and, uh, and uh, other, other industries. You know, and I, I, I photographed... Uh, Three mines, three mines that have closed in the past um, in the past forty years. Right. You know, we, did, we did have thirteen mines around this area at one point. Um, we, we have a mining museum there, you know, which which uh, which the charge seven pound to get in. You know, the the the, the bar in uh, the ordinary folk out of there really. It's a very expensive day out for a family of four. Uh, it used to be free. If you're never able to get off this desert island, eventually. Where is all your archive going to go? How are you going to deal with this amazing set of historical images of, of community life? It's it, it's, a, it's a it's a difficult one, Zach. Um, you know, I've, I've, I have built up a hell of an archive. Um, you know, my, my negative my negative collection must run into the tens of thousands. Well, it's obviously tens of thousands of negatives. Um, I've I've been scanning negatives for the past five years from my collection. Uh, and uh, I'm only up to 1982 at the moment. You know, so I've, 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 I've still got about 20, 30 years worth of negatives to uh, to look through and scan, and uh, I've still got all my contact sheets. I've got my work prints, um, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, I would like to think that they, that they will be sort of housed somewhere uh, when, I, when I shuffle off this uh, this mortal coil. Wonderful. It's very interesting to hear that. Have you thought of buying another two scanner so you can do three at the same time? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think you can get computer powerful enough to cope with three coming in at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Here's number. Is this number four? Yeah, this is the, 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 the as, you, as you mentioned before. You know, the, this was from the Nicaraguan trip. Um, but uh, I very rarely use flash. Uh, I, I carry one just out of necessity, but um, I very rare, rarely use flash. And I'm, I'm just sitting having a having a bottle of beer with a couple of couple of guys in uh, Managua, and uh, I heard uh, a lot of commotion going on outside, and there was loads of horns peeping and uh, uh, lots of excitement. So I, I dashed out 
I put my put my flash gun on, and I managed to get, you know, the, uh, a couple of shots. This is one of the shots of uh, of these uh, these um, FSLM supporters uh, on, on a campaign trip, yeah. campaign run uh, in Managua. Well, this is Sandinista period. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Dan, uh, Danny Lotega was still the um, still the president at that time. And, it must have uh, been a fantastic place. Was this around the same? T- was it Susan Masalis was there, wasn't she? Was that? I think she was there for the elections. But uh, Susan uh, did some work in the, in the late seventies with with the uh, with the uh, Nicaraguan uh, Nicaraguan um, revolution. And this is very different for a lot of your shots because oh, there's yes. a lot of available light and and, and, and having a big powerful flash in your top eight. I think that's really interesting. Is that because it's it evokes a, a, a wonderful memory of where you were and you were on an adventure? It's, it's a good just, shot. It's just, yeah. what is it what makes you want this picture? Because it's very different to everything else you've got. It's, 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 I, I love fleeting moments. Right. You know. I think uh, I've seen, I'm seeing this with your work a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love to capture the capture something that's fleeting, you know, that's something that's gone gone within, within half a second. You know, and I, I try... Uh, and I, I don't use motor drives or stuff like that. All my stuff's just one shot. Um, you know, and I used to be very frugal on film as well, so I used, to, I used to be very, very careful. And a lot of my stuff, a lot of my best stuff, actually, is uh, is actually sort of end of roll stuff, where, where, where it's, it's right on the end of the roll. And, and I, okay. I've just managed to eke that out of that roll of film. You know, it's, it's always pleasing to do that. Is it that capturing of movement in that millisecond time? Is that what is interests you? Because I know when you look at something like Hockney's work in the in the sixties yeah. with his um, with his, I think is it the swimming pool splash, where yeah. you see the spray of water coming up, and to many people that would it would be nothing. It would be a picture of a swimming pool with the water coming out, the splashing. But for Hockney, it was him painting movement, and that's what really interested him. And that's I think right. that's what resonated within his work, where he he wanted to capture that that movement in time with his work, and yeah. and is that in a sense where you're what you what you're what you're doing? Because if you look at your archive and at what what you've got on your website, there's a lot of static stuff, there's a lot of observational stuff, yes, yes. but there's also in your selection there's a lot of movement, and that's an interesting an interesting selection choice for me. Yeah. But I, no, I do like to capture the fleeting moment, you know. Really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now, this I love, and this is a, a very, um, looks like a very strong, sad individual. Tell us about this picture. Um, well, you know, this, this was taken in 1977. Um, and my father used to uh, collect uh, football pools. Can you remember the football pools? Yeah. Um, you know, where, where people have put you know, so many drawers, and uh, yeah. when was an agent for uh, Vernon's, and uh, he took me out one Saturday morning with uh, with these football pools, and uh, we, we, we knocked on a few doors, so there were all you know, different clients that he went to. Uh, and this is a guy called Jimmy Potts. Um, he had been stuck in the house for uh, a couple of weeks, drinking and stuff like that. Um, but he's a very strong man, very strong man. And it turned out that he was goalkeeper for Leeds United. Wow. You no, know, you know, you know, you know, when people, when people talk about Ashton, they always talk about Jackie John, Bobby John, um, Jackie Milburn, and the footballers, you know, Steve Harris and all that, you know. But uh, what I forget is that there's other players who were, who were working in, in other divisions uh, who, who just got on with it. And Jim, you know, Jimmy was the first team player, the uh, first team goalkeeper for Leeds United between the years of about 36 to 39. Then he, he, he left his career in, uh, in football, then went to fight in the World War World War II and came back and worked at the pit. Wow. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? That's a sort of the past photographers who yeah. didn't get paid and, 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 and right. you know, there's hundreds of them. We think there's one or two, but the football yeah. was an industry where you it was just like working down the... Shipyards, doesn't it? You get a couple of quick, that's, that's a bob a week, and that's it. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's not all about the fame; it's about the enjoyment of what you do. Yeah, and it's interesting how reflective this is looking. And you, where were you positioned with the shot? You were inside, standing in front of the window, and you yeah. and you yeah. used the available light. Yes, it was just just the, just the light that was coming in through the through the window. Like, I you know, I, I tend to, I have um, the, the sort of technique where you know, window light is is, is 
is for me one of the best legs you can get. That is a, it's a wonderful, strong um, port weight shot, and he he looks very reflective. And, and and I like the way you know you knew that he was a a footballer, and he you yeah. have made a sort of I don't know the shot shots are quite a reflective and sad moment in maybe his life, is it? No, but uh, yeah, he, he, he looks quite. Um, he looks quite diminutive there, but he's a very light. He was a big man. He had hands the size of um, dinner plates, you know. Uh, you know, being a goalkeeper. Very and, interesting. But it, it was just, you know, the fact that he had, um, he, he was just alone in his house. Uh, I don't think he had family, um, so you know, he, he had. Yeah. He had all, all of that you know, before the you know, post-war, during the war, all that camaraderie. And he, was, he was there just yeah. on his own. And you know, one of the highlights was was my father coming along with his football pools and a little bit chat. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's move on to another shot with a decisive moment. Yes, yeah, another another fleeting moment, really, isn't it? It's a little, little moment of happenstance, you know. Uh, but this is from the minus picnic. Um, you know, the, we used to have you know, the, the minus minus picnic used to be held annually, where all the all the miners from different colouries would gather together, and uh, every colour had a brass band. Um, Sadly, all that's gone now. You know, uh, and what, and what is it about the shot which really is it that mo movement, that moment again? That it, it, that moment again. You know, the, the, this band had just been announced as the uh, the winners of the uh, the brass band competition, and they were just walking down the hill. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, I had my camera to my to, to my eye and just followed the action through until this moment, and took the shot. Did you go through periods where you thought thirty five mil, Rawley? 35 mil rolling. Yeah. Yeah. What but, usually decided, what was the deciding factor on the format? Um, well, it depended, I used to use 35 mil more as a sketchbook. Um, as, you know, so, to that sort of intuitive response with the camera. You know, where we, I would, you know, I discovered sort of wide angle lenses later on. Uh, you know, so uh, I, I love 28 mils, you know, um, but you know, you can pre focus. Um, Stop down and just just go for, go for the picture rather than the technicalities of the picture. And that was twenty eight mil with a thirty five mil. Yeah. Format. What about with your with your um your your six by six? What, what was the favourite? Uh, was it the same equivalent then? Was it? I, I would. No, I, I did. I did use that for um for some stuff held handheld, but in the main, I would I would I would, I would stick the uh, the rolling flex on on a tripod. Yeah. It'd be more more of a studied approach, really. Uh, or a more, more contemplative uh, approach to uh, to portraiture and, uh, and, and the likes of that, all, all that, all landscape. So what, how many lens, what's your lenses of choice then? What, how many lenses do you think you've used in your career? Uh, two. Two, yeah. It's interesting that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, are they, what are them? Is this for 35 mil? Uh, a 50 mil and a 28. That's interesting. That's interesting. And it's not uncommon. And I think with me, three. And it's interesting, isn't it? We live in this. If you, sorry, when if you did a, I'm jumping here. If you did a, saying you did a commercial job, would right. for for an editorial, would you change the lenses? Um, if if, it, if if I needed to, I would uh, I, I would either borrow a lens from someone if I needed. No, I have now. I have you now when I've done commercial work and and I've done demos and stuff like that for the unions. It's, inter uh, it's an borrowed, interesting, sorry, it's an interesting format, but sorry. I borrowed, I, I borrowed 70 to 200 uh, lenses for my Nikon and stuff like that. Uh, just, just out of necessity, really. If you, want, you know, if you want headshots and stuff like that, yeah. I'd be interested to talk to other yeah. photographers about this, because I think when I do my own work, and I'm on 35mm format, it is 35mm, 50mm, sometimes it's 70, 80mm, yeah. that's it. But... Yeah. If I have what I do have in my camera bags is a couple of zooms, and mm. I never get them out. I never use them for my own work. But when work yeah. comes along, they always they all. I put my other lenses away, and I use a seventeen to fifty five or a seventy yeah. to one hundred and five, yeah. because of the fast. Because I because of I don't like too many things to play with, and and yeah. it's some, it's the speed I can work at, and. Yeah. And it's interesting, isn't it? And you've got you you hire in and you get all the lenses in when you when you, yeah. when you get work. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I think the secret to photography is simplicity. Simplicity is the key. You know, um, you know, 
you know, how, you know, how complicated is a spanner, you know? Mm, it's you interesting, know, isn't that? Right you know, the, the mechanics don't go looking for different sorts of spanners. The photographers look look for different lenses and cameras and think that's going to be the, um, the cure-all for, for the ills, you know? And very interesting. I'll tell you what I'm not seeing what, as I move on to your next shot is a, there's no colour. And, and you, <laughs> your colour's really becoming a bit of a prominent feature with your work. And, and, and that there's no colour within this final selection so far. Why is that? I'm still experimenting with colour, really, um, Zach. Um, I've, uh, I've, I've, always, I've always been, um, been drawn to black and white. I was born in black and white, you know. Um, so, you know, the, the colour's a new thing to me. Um, I did shoot some colour in the 90s, uh, a little bit of uh, colour film, uh, when I was doing some work on uh, the recruiting film and stuff. But I, I've always I've always been towards the black and white. But, um, yeah, my, my recent work, I've, I have actually included some uh, some colour work in that as well. Um, and I, I experiment with colour. I, li I, li I like um, quite vivid, quite vivid um, technicolour colour, if yeah. you know what I mean. I like I like to play with the colour. Who prints your work? It's um it, well uh, I've got I've got a friend of mine who does a little bit of printing for me. A little bit. You haven't got a print? You haven't got a little dark room in the back? I've got a I've, I've got a printer myself. Wow. Um, I, I'm I'm busy trying to set my dark room up again because I, I lost that a while ago. I had a lovely the VF five or four enlarger and stuff like that. And I sold it. Uh, I, I fell out with photography for, for about ten years. Uh, in the mid '90s, and I got rid of a lot of my gear uh, on the processing side. So uh, you know, I had six foot six and all sorts of stuff, and I, I, I wanted to give the stuff away. Um, but I've, uh, you know, I'm just getting another and larger, and I'm, I'm going to set up my dark room again and uh, start doing printing again. It's interesting. So I'm not the craft of printing, you know. It's interesting That's how things have come full circle, and, and I think what you said about in the '90s and in the zine was a lot of. Photographers who were who did just throw a lot of stuff out. We because we were coming into the digital age, weren't we? And how things have come full circle, isn't it? Interesting. Yeah. Tell me about this shot. Well, this is uh, this was taken at uh, Woodhorn Colliery in uh, Ashton. That's it. It's now a museum there. Uh, it's a mining museum. Um, and this was the last shift, last shift at Woodhorn. Woodhorn Colliery has been 1981. And uh, I was just about to pack my gear up. Uh, I'd been photographing the, uh, the the last shift coming off, and uh, you know, there's photographs of, uh, of the men coming out from the cages. The cages are just behind that guy there, where, where the east west signs are. Um, so you know, the guys were sort of coming out out from the cage, and I was photographing all that available light. And then I was just about to pack my and then that, that was all gone. And I, I was just about to pack my gear up. And, uh, the guy in the banksman, the guy who was in charge of the cages, said, "Oh, there's another guy coming up." So I, I hung on for five minutes, and um, this guy here uh, came up. He's a de pit deputy, mm. and he was he was actually the last man to come out of Woodhorn Colliery. Wow. Uh, I think I had one shot left on the roll, and uh, it was that pitch black um, for for the type of film I was using on the roll reflex at the time that, that, that I put my flash gun on again. And uh, this was more or less the last shot and uh, managed to capture him uh, in all his glory. Can you still smell it? Well, you know, it's, a, it, 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 it's not really a, a smell, it's, a, you know, it's the dust in the air. I know. Um, and it's a very dusty, a dusty atmosphere. And the heat, um, it's a very, uh, I've been down the, down the coal mines a few times and what, what surprised me was, was the heat. Um, I mean, it's very cold, but you, you get hit by this warm, this warm air as soon as you as soon as you as soon as you go down there. I've been down the Monk Weymouth colliery yeah. a few times and I've never forgot the smell of the heat. And, yes. and that relief of coming up the up the cage yeah. and where he's standing, that it's done, you're out for the day, you you got fresh air and That's right. it's a very poignant image and um I remember the series of stuff you threw together for um the Great North Exhibition, the big is what well, there was the Great North Exhibition in at the um, side uh, gallery recently, yeah. okay. and I saw your work upstairs, and it, it just sort of reminded me again of, of the period because I think in the when you've been down the coal mines, you it's a something you just never forget. And I, I used to go down for two hours or something, and yeah. these guys were down for 10, 11, 12 hours, and it, it's just yeah. a, like a man's yeah. job. Um, That's right. yeah. and yeah. 
Yeah, my, grand, grand, my grandfather worked there for 52 years at yeah. uh, on Colliery. Yeah, he, he, he worked on the Colliery, then he went to he went, he went to, to do his uh, do his duty in uh, World War World War One for three years. Uh, came back, worked on the Colliery, and uh, when he retired after 52 years, uh, he was actually given a house just just more or less a stone's throw away from the Colliery Yard. You know, so you know, my my, my uh, uh, my memories of being a child was always going to uh, my nan and granddad's house, and it was always across the road from the colliery yard. So you know, you would hear, you'd hear the industry there, and the, you know, the noises of the of the of the um, locomotives and the, and the you know, carrying coal in and out of the in and out of the um, the mine. Um, you know, my, my father worked at the mine in the mines for 45 years. Wow. Uh, my brother he worked in the mines for 30 years before the the then, then he, he finished after the miners' strike. Are they all in Ashton? All in Ashton, yeah. And have you got pictures and documentation of your brothers and stuff like that? Uh, not particularly. Um, I, I have photographed family, yeah. uh, but uh, I tend not to uh, not to let that carry across into my personal work. It's interesting the amount of time you've spent there that you obviously get to know the community, and yeah. you know, I think. It'd be interesting the generation who say are 30s and 40s now can sort of see some of their childhood in a way through your pictures. And do you have a good association and relationship with that sort of 30, 40 year old? You know, because you've been there, if you've been doing it for 40 years, you yes. the, 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 the age generation in, in the 30s now would be somewhat familiar yeah. with you being around, I guess. That's right. Um, you know, it's it's you know, be, my last work that I did in Ashton, the Hearst, the Hearst book, uh, I was actually photographing people that I've known for, for donkey's years, you know. Um, so, you know, there was, you know, there's a shot in the, a shot in the book with, with a guy. Um, and uh, I've, I've known him since he was nine years old, you know. Um, so, it, 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 you know, you, you, you see these people all the way through the years and you see them progress or not. Um, you know, they're, they're the, you know, I've known some guys that I worked with when I was doing white, uh, when I was working with white yes people. Yeah. I've never worked, never worked in 35 years. They've had schemes upon schemes upon schemes, but they've never, you know, never been in the lucky position to have a full time, full time job. And that, and that's just, that's just the way that Ashton has gone. Um, that there isn't any sort of uh, sustainable industries now to uh, employ people in the masses. You know, we did have 5,000 miners in the town. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, everyone everyone was linked to the colonies, and uh, everyone knew people who worked at the pit or who was work who was working in the ancillary uh, ancillary um, industries, uh, yeah. supporting the work of the pit as well. And it's interesting through the side you were able to, you know, you were really productive in that eighty ninety period with the side, and a very privileged position to be in. And you must oh. have, you know, you've got a a do well documented sort of. The beginning stages of that yeah. transition period as well, you know, and it's 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 really interesting now yeah. where you're going to go with this all. And I know you mentioned Hearst there, and yeah. Hearst is a is a mixture of colour and black and white. That's great. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's quite your colour work, as you said to me before, was very um, very much similar to you choosing colour. You're looking at colour like almost as an impressionist style we're looking at the palette you're looking at ways of evolving the color within the frame it's very yeah. in a sense it would be similar to the black and white because black and white's about shapes isn't it it's about patterns and yeah. um and, and I, I, I think it's my whole thing with graphics as well you know, graphics, yeah as well yeah um but, you know, i'm always looking for shapes you know yeah i think i think that comes out in your black and white definitely and i think where I'm interested in is where you're going. When you get off your island, of course. And we'll continue that. Let's look at this. This is your final shot, right. Unas. That's a yeah. strange name for somewhere in Ashton. Unas. Is that what, what's Unas about? Well, yeah, Unas just a, just a, um, um, a woman's name. Yeah, you know, she, she, she owned the shop. Interesting. Um, but yeah, this is you know, it's another one of my early shots. And you know, we're getting back to the decisive moment again, you know. But I was uh, I was actually photographing the shop front at the time, and, uh, and I had the camera up to my eye, and uh, I noticed a girl 
just at the corner of my left eye, was walking along with the pushchair. And uh, when she got to the when she, when she got to the gable end of this uh, of, of, of this um, of this shop, she just started to run full pelt uh, to try and keep out of the picture. You know, and uh, I, I managed to just capture her and what capture capture her on a journey across the picture in one. You know, in that one shot, or did you shoot a sequence? Shot, just one shot. One shot. Wow. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you've got to wind, haven't you? <laughs> one shot wind, one shot wind, yeah. Um, you forget about that, don't you? Um, with, yeah. With, with the digital, I, it's interesting. It happened that quickly, you know. And she just disappeared off around the corner. Wow, uh, a sense of achievement, I guess. You know, and you're lucky she, you've got her bending over like that as well. So, um, no, no, the eye line and everything, it just works, you know. Is she hiding from the mannequins? Or? What year was this? Uh, this is uh, 1978. And this is that beginning, wasn't it? You were almost with the with the shot of the bus station. Yeah. You have ended it in a period. Your eight, your top eight have ended it in a period of like the yeah. one year's difference between your yeah. best. You know your two your, the two shots which are at the starting of your best shot and your best shot, your most memorable yeah. shot. And that must have been a hell of a learning curve for you at that period then. It, it was, yeah. But uh, you know, you know, I was I was looking at a lot of um, a, a lot of other photographers' work as well through through side gallery. Uh, you know, the exhibition policy was fantastic. Um, you know, I had the work of Cartier Bresson from the B and A, and uh, uh, I saw saw that in nineteen seventy eight. You know, it was like two hundred and forty exhibition prints from the uh, from Cartier Bresson's archive, and it really opened my eye um, to uh, to work. Um, but um, you know, it, it, it's and it, uh, this this particular shop was in was in my first exhibition uh, in '79. And, th and this is where I I got noticed noticed from the side gallery to uh, as a photographer, you know. Um, so it, 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 it's always meant a lot to me. This. Yeah, I think this picture's travelled with you, hasn't it? It has. And it's interesting how. As a photographer, when you take stuff, say, 30 yeah. years ago, you were there, you shot it. You, you can't quite remember it, in a sense, but you know you were there and you did it. And it, it, it's, it's when I look back at, say, pictures yeah. I shot 20 years ago, and it, it's that... I was you, you, you can never sort of grasp where you were and what you were thinking, but it, 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 there's a sense of surreal aspect this is quite a surreal aspect thinking about you were there shooting that picture yeah. but it does travel with you and, and you become oh, it becomes part of who you are and your legacy you know and and it's really interesting that you've chosen them two pictures at the beginning and the end which were only a year apart and, and i'm fascinated by that but um, if you had to choose one of them which one would you take if i said to you you can only have one picture on you on your desert island darkroom, which one would it be? I would, I would probably take this one. Uh, it, it's just, to, to me, it just screams life. It's uh, it's quite joyful. Um, and I think if you're on a desert island, you need you need something to cheer, you, cheer yourself up uh, yeah. every day. I mean, it, it, it is, it's just just the moment. It's uh, it's the climbing, it's, uh, it's the joy, and it's just the fleetness. It's it, it just, just life as it is, and it's, it's just, just a fleeting moment, really, uh, in, in an otherwise uh, sort of complicated world. Wonderful, wonderful. So, your camera of choice. Why do you love this Roly so much? I love the Roly because uh, it's you know it's a precision instrument. Uh, they, don't, they don't go wrong uh, that, that often. I have had one of these apart uh, on, my, on my on my kitchen table. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> but, uh, Strip it down blindfolded, was it? Pardon? You stripped it down blindfolded. Oh, uh, well, they're not blindfolded. Uh, <laughs> but by God, there's some cogs and some springs and screws in there, I tell you. Once you go, you know, once you get past the uh, past the past the front face here. Um, but uh, I, I love my roll reflexes. How many uh, have you got? I've, I've just got a couple, a couple of roll reflexes, yeah. But uh, you know, the prices of them are going through the roof for, for the older ones. Um, yeah. uh, my, my preferred one is a 1955 model. I've never used one, but I tell you a camera which I have used, which is a similar style, but much bigger is the, was it the Mamiya C330? 
boats, right? The big yeah. boy, it, uh, yeah. absolutely massive. I love that camera, and I can see the appreciation with this format. And I know the photographers who use this camera, yeah. but that thing you got in your hand scares me. Them big, yeah. them big metzes have right. scared me in my. I've never used them in my own project work, but I've, I've used them for commercial work many yeah. moons ago before the speed lights took hold, and they are. Did you take one of them to Nicaragua? I had a, I had a Metz 45, wow. just a battery operated one. Uh, but I, I, I actually use a, a quantum a quantum battery pack as well wow. uh, on the Metz. Quantum battery pack must have been quite a few bob in them days, I tell you, 20 yeah. years ago. Cost, uh, and, and I think I got mine about 19, 1988, 89, and I think it was about 250 quid then, so it was quite, yeah. quite a lot. I used to have, do you remember the battery cases which used to go into the bottom of them and you have like there were like eight battery cases and then you I used to have about sixteen of them right. all lined up the batteries I said I don't know why I didn't buy a quantum pack to be honest but um, yeah. they were they were one hefty um, piece they were a hefty piece of machine which you use and staple diet with photographers in the nineties I think weren't they? they, they were what we all what we yes. used. Um, but yeah so rolling is your camera of choice, roll is where you're going and with that, you've got a brick of foam. Yeah, yeah, brick of triads. I think I think on your desert island, it would suit you actually documenting your life there because this is would just be another stage of your life which you're documenting around you, and um, you could make another exhibition out of that one as well, couldn't oh. you? <laughs> <laughs> why the one twenty? Why the? Well, sorry, not the one twenty. Why the? Why the four hundred TX? Uh, it's which is very very versatile. It's um, it's got good latitude, you know. Now we know uh, as with photographers now with the with the digital, it's got it's got good good dynamic range. If you like, it's got good latitude. Uh, it's very forgiving. You know, if you're underexposed, but you can still you can still squeeze a print out of them. It, uh, it is a good film which you can push and play with in a dark room, print developing temperatures and stuff like that. It is a very good film. I also like the HP five as well, and I think. Yeah. The four hundred for me, and it was either that or the or the, and I shot all, a lot of my projects on with the TX. Um, it, it's a very good film. It's a, it's a, it's a good all round, all round one. Yeah. And your book. What is it about this book and Tony Ray Jones which really inspired you? It was one of the first books that I saw at um, at college uh, in the college library. And I was one of the only um, students there that was uh, that was. Borrowing, um, borrowing books on uh, documentary photography, you know, and uh, the off by Tony Ray Jones to just knock, knock my socks off, you know, just, just the fact that you, you could capture these moments within the frame, you know, and uh, I, I, I love to use the full frame, you know, corner to corner, and uh, that, that, that's what that, that's what Tony Ray Jones is all about, I think, but you know, but also it's capturing um, sort of fleeting moments and. Uh, and just the quirkiness of life in general. And do you think it came out with your work? Do you think his normality of everyday life came out with your work and in black and white as well? Very much so. Um, you know, I, 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 I only looked at, um, at a few, you know, there was only a few books in the library uh, at that college at the time uh, to do with documentary photography. It was a day off to uh, yeah. Jones. Uh, also the English by Ian Berry that was quite influential in the, in the way I look at things. Um, I, shoot, I shoot a lot of uh, vertical shots as well with a wide angle, and, and I think that probably comes from me, I think. Uh, and also, um, Diane Arbus, um, her monograph, which is all shot on really, really flexible one mirror. Uh, it was all two and a quarter square, you know. Interesting, very good. Mick, what I'd say is if you, wherever you get off your island, um, your, your, what, what is next for you? I know you've just had Hearst come out, yeah. and which is available to buy from you directly, is it? Um, if, if people get in touch with me through my email, um, I can uh, I, I can ship the one off. Uh, and yeah, so we can buy if they get in touch with you, you can buy yeah. that. The book in the main was was actually done for uh, distribution to the um, to the wider public within the Hearst area. Um, it was never meant to uh, to make any any sort of uh, any money really. Um, so uh, you know we, we we've done the work we've uh, we've distributed it out. Um, 
you know, the, the original plan was to do a series of postcards and, uh, and actually send pictures out to every household in the in the area. Um, but that, you know, we, we changed the goalposts about four or five times, and then uh, we decided on the, on doing the book. Yeah. I was uh, I was looking up to have Alan Ward, um, a designer across from Manchester. Uh, he he did he did the layouts and, uh, and stuff, and uh, spent a nice couple of days across from Manchester with Alan. Um, He's a very, very good book designer. Okay, and then with regards to when you get off your island, what is what is the next thing is on the agenda? Well, I'll just continue scanning my negatives. Like, Don't you have a book on the, on the go? A new book? Uh, well, there, there, there's, um, there, 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 there's going to be another book coming out uh, next year, hopefully with uh, with Bluecoat uh, Press. So, That'd be uh, in addition to the Blue Court Library, that would be. Yes. And that's going to be what? Is that going to be, is this a def def defining a collection? Uh, it'll be a collection of my Coal Town photographs, which are which you know, photographs and, uh, and projects which I've, uh, I've done within a five-mile five mile radius of my hometown. Um, but all, all linking in to this one theme of the Coal Town, which uh, doesn't exist anymore. And do you think there's an exhibition out of this coming as well? Uh, possibly a retrospective exhibition, yeah. Side gallery? Uh, keep my fingers crossed. Photographer's gallery? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I don't see why not. You know, you're, you're a man who's committed his life to documenting life around him and, and his his family and his, 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 his community. And you've got every right to be in the photographer's gallery, as far as I'm concerned, or back at the side. So I'm going to... I'm still, I'm still a beginner, Zach. We're all beginners. We're all beginners. Yeah. I think, you know, Mick, when you, when you, when you, the more you do in this business, the more you realise you don't what you don't know. That's and, right. And, yeah. and I think, but that's a, a very, very yeah. rich way to look at it. And, and yeah. I think, you know, between you and I, the amount of years we've got in in, in taking pictures, that's right. we realise. There's still so much more to know and, and, and knowledge, and I learn every day. But I think that comes out in your work. I think you can see there's a sort of continuous, inquisitive nature in design yeah. and in people with your work. And, and you, you know, you don't have to do this, but you're there, you're doing it. And, and that's, that's I, right. I like that, and that's what I look for. And I like commitment. I like the people who. who, who yeah, the, first, the first twenty years of a project are the worst. Yeah. You know, if we start starting projects, well, the first 20 years are the, are the hardest, you know. Well, let's hope that you're not on the desert island for 20 years. You've got your eight pictures, you've got your camera, your film, your book, and you get a, uh, a pocket knife just in case anything else, you know, in case you need to strip down that rolling. Um, thank yeah, you very good. much. You are my first castaway. It's been a pleasure. And um, I hope that your stay on the island is... Uh, productive. Thank you very much, mate. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Zach. Thanks very much. All the best. Thank you. Tell Bill I got a ticket I'm proud I'm getting with it Tell Bill I got a ticket home Many nights get you bumping in the ground And Lord, won't you lead me down Salutation Road I got the first train home Salutation Road I got the first train home Salutation Road I got the first train home Too many nights bumping and grinding down Salutation Road, the hill I got the first train home. 